You guys want to know how to ship monster fish in the mail? You guys know you can ship fish in the mail? You can send them, you can receive them? Let's send out some monsters, take you guys along for the ride, maybe show you guys a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Catch you guys in a second after that intro. Alright, so they're not monsters yet. Yet. But they're gonna get there. We're gonna be sending out some real mags today to my buddy Timothy. Over there, we got the real mag. Got all my stuff set up. We'll go over all that crap here in a second. I'm gonna be sending out some fry off of these two. And, uh, you know, instead of me just doing everything and not putting the camera to it, might as well just send them out, take you guys along for the ride, kind of give you guys a walk through what I do when I send out fish. And um, hopefully, we'll have some fun, have a great time. It is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Happy day. And uh, welcome to the video. Welcome to my fisher. Welcome to our how-to shipping vlog thing video thingy. Catch you guys in a second. I'll be right back doing something. I'll probably show you what we got over here. Okay, first things first. Let's go over the utensils, equipment required to ship fish. What we got over cha. Okay, let's go over what we got here. Got a beautiful box. Standard uh, 12 by 12 by 10 inches high. I've got some nice three quarters inch styrofoam made into a DIY insulated shipping box. Cut it all out myself. One of these days I'll do a shipping box video. It's very simple stuff. Basically, you just cut it and stick it in there. Um, got all that in there. Beautiful, sealed with tape. Over here, we've got some bag buddies. Very important. These go in the bag to make sure the fish. Um, dechlorinates the water, gives them a little stress relief. Got a couple 8 by 20 inch bags here. Heat pack. 40 hour heat pack. Of course, some beautiful rubber bands. A Sharpie. Because wherever the heck you are, you need duct tape and a Sharpie. And I don't have duct tape, so I got the Sharpie, right? Alright, and some nice, fantastic tape. Not sponsored by Duck, but if Duck wants to sponsor Cichlid Metal 9, let's do this. All right, so that's all the stuff we've got. We've also got some newspaper that's gonna work as absorbent material within the box as well as um, padding and whatnot. It kind of works as an awesome double, double awesome piece of equipment. And not only do you get to do that, you get to read this. Oh, political TV ads on health law hit 445 million. Didn't know that before today, even though I had the newspaper. Could have read it earlier. First thing I like to do is actually open these heat packs um, just because they do take a little bit to heat up, probably take about 30 minutes to actually heat up. And uh, in the time that you're doing stuff, shipping, filling bag, and doing that, um, you'll be able to know if your heat pack's defective. Because, you know, I'm not going to say that the heat packs are terrible and that they all don't work. But um, there is a small chance that you're going to get a heat pack that doesn't work. And the last thing you want to do is get everything done, have your fish bagged up, and then open a heat pack, throw it in the box, put it in the box, send it somewhere. Heat pack didn't work, didn't do its job within the box. And, um, you know, if I can do my job and prevent that by making sure that the heat pack starts heating up before I even seal the box closed, that's what I'm going to do. Next step in the process is to add a little bit of insurance, a little bit of extra security to each of our shipping bags. Something I'm going to be implementing going forward when I ship is I took some of my clear tape, boom, this stuff, and I just put three layers, one layer each, all the way up the bag where the water's going to go. Water goes in, fish is down here, just adds a little bit of extra thickness, a little bit of extra insurance to the bottom of that bag. Um, a little bit extra security for that fish. All right, so the next step is to fill our bags with water and get it temperature acclimated so that when you put the fish in the bag, they don't have some major shock when you put them in there. So we've got our bags floating in here. I've got the water. This is fresh off, fresh out of the tap. This is not tank water. You want to use fresh, clean water when you're shipping fish um, because no matter how many water changes you do in your tanks, there's still going to be toxins in there. And the best bet is to just use fresh, fresh, clean water. That's where these bag buddies come in handy right here, these guys. I'm going to drop one of these in each bag. It's going to dechlorinate the water, add a little stress release to the fish for shipment. Um, basically a little super magic pill. Um, they're expensive too. Um, but yeah, getting the water acclimated to temperature so that when the fish go in the bag, everything's good. Um, we're using separate bags right here so that my taped bags aren't floating around with the tape sloughing off and all that kind of stuff. So when the water's temperature acclimated, I'll put it in there. We'll get the fish, all that kind of stuff. Oh, I'm just I'm just waiting for the water to 
warm up. You guys can see this. Okay, so we're still waiting for our water to heat up just a little bit more, just a little bit more. You guys can see the water's turned nice, nice little blue coloration in each bag. That's good. That means the tablets are dissolving, doing their job, and uh, they're going to dechlorinate that water, do all that nice stuff. What we did over here is we took our newspaper, getting our box all set up, got it all lined up. You're going to be able to fold these ones over, fold those ones over. But like I said, newspaper works great. Not only is it packing, cushioning, insulating material, but it also absorbs water if one of these bags, you know, if a little water does leak out, it will help absorb that water a little bit and um, should help. It's fantastic stuff. It's amazing stuff. Newspaper is probably the best shipping material out there, which is weird. Um, right back. So we're going to do a couple temperature checks here, not only on the bags, but remember what the first thing that we did before we did anything is open up that heat pack. we got to make sure that heat pack's heating up. So let's check with our awesome infrared thermometer. It's reading 87.6, and I can tell you guys right now it is not 87 degrees in here. So awesome, thumbs up, the heat pack's working. So we can take this, set it back over here, keep it away from getting wet or anything, because, you know, don't want anything to happen with that. So the next thing we got to temperature is our bag. So I'm going to take this beautiful, try this all one-handed. And that's temping at 80 degrees, which is the exact temperature of that tank, which is awesome. So thumbs up, thumbs up, heat pack's working. Bags are acclimated, so the next step I gotta do basically is catch the fish, put the fish, transfer into the bags with the tape, and little ins the security bags, and um, basically finish everything up. We're basically on the home stretcher. All right, so now that our water is acclimated, we've gotta take our water in our holding bags, and then we're gonna transport it into our nicely security taped bags. Maybe all fancy with it. Basically, like I said, with the tape on the bags, we're just covering our bases a little bit, adding a little extra security to each bag, just so that, you know, if the people transporting the fish may be a little irresponsible. Um, if it helps, it helps, right? And so the next thing we've got to do is we've got to take our corners of our bags and tape these up, because what will happen is your fish will swim to that corner, get stuck, suffocate, and have some issues. So we've got to tape up the corners of the bags. we take a little strip of tape like so. This corner, the other two corners, and then I'll be right back. So I got all the corners taped up. Since we're going to be double bagging these bags, I can already put it in this second bag. I probably could have done this earlier. Eh, whatever. Like so, and then these can go back in the water. And acclimate, and the tape's not sitting in the water. Should have thought of that earlier. All right, I believe it's time to catch some fish. And we'll do that in a second. First, we've got the bags transferred over here. I've double bagged them. Let me move this over here somewhere else. Okay. I've double bagged them, got the outside bag, so they're just sitting in the water so that they can stay at temperature just in case. Um, got the outside bag rolled all the way down, so I've still got access to the inside bag. And uh, like I said, basically the next step is to catch the fish, put them in the bag, seal the bags, and uh, we'll go from there. See you guys for just a second. Okay, time to catch the fish. Oh, there we go. Beautiful little stud. Grab it, quick transfer. One down. Transfer. Two down. Oh. I've got the last two in one swap. Anytime I catch fish, I always do a visual inspection just to make sure that what I'm giving people is not, you know, a messed up fish, because out of a group of fry, you're going to have a few fish that are not going to be particularly the strongest. So I make sure I do a visual inspection, make sure they've got some good amount of freckling, make sure that they're healthy looking, um, so that I don't send out, like, disease looking fish to people, because that's just not how it works. But like I said, out of a few hundred fry, you're going to get fish that look like that, so that's why I check to make sure I'm not sending those fish. These fish are loaded with freckles, by the way. Transfer. Double transfer. Bag. All right. You can see bag A right here. Two beautiful specimens in there. 
bag B. I got a stud in there and then a beautifully spangled up little one. Um, be fantastic if that's like a stud male and a beautifully spangled up female. But I got all the fish caught. Uh, I got to set the camera back up and we'll show you how to tie them, all right? All right, got our rubber bands. I'm gonna go grab the fish real quick. And you guys can see them doing awesome. Looking very, very healthy. Spin it down. Spin it down. We're doing a rubber band at the bottom of our little spiral here. Like that. We've got to retwist this a little bit. And then we're going to fold that over. And then finish wrapping. So, and then I'm even going to add a second one just for some insurance. You might be wondering, you know, the fish live in water, why are you giving them more air than water? The most important thing in a, in a shipping bag is actually air. Um, you want about one third water to about two parts air, and um, that will give your fish, honestly, the best, best experience. Just gives them more oxygen to breathe. Cause you know, the fish may live in water, but they require oxygen. You want to make sure that there's no big air gaps between your first bag and your second bag, because if your first bag leaks, the point is for the water to go into the second bag. And if there's a whole bunch of air gaps, what can happen is all that water that's coming out of your first bag from that leak will go straight into your second bag. And um, the fish can't pass through that little hole, and the fish will end up dying because there's no water left. So the less, water, the less air space you give in that second bag, between the first bag and the second bag, the better, so that if a whole puncture does happen, a little bit of water drains out, but the rest of the water stays in the first bag. And these guys are done. Just got to do this, repeat the same thing over there with the other fish. We already labeled our box, do not shake, fragile, all that kind of stuff. You want to write all over these boxes to make sure that they understand, don't mess with the box. Cover your bases, like we keep saying. All right, so we gotta put the bags in. Like so. We're gonna start packing these guys in nice and tight. Don't want them moving around, don't want them jumping around anywhere. Loose paper. You guys get the picture, right? We've got them packed in beautifully. Last thing we got to do is add our heat pack. I like to wrap this thing in newspaper. You don't want it directly touching your fish. At least the bags. It gets too hot. And then we need our lid, which is over here. This guy. That's going to go on there. And then we're going to seal up this baby. All I gotta do is put the label on it, get this thing out in the mail, and hopefully be at the next place in a couple days. Thanks for joining me. If you like today's video, hit that thumbs up. If you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. And uh, see you guys next time.